Hey everybody, what's up? It's Joel, AKA The Daily Guru, and we are here at the Way Station in Brooklyn for another edition of Gavin with the Guru. I'm extremely excited because with me today, I have the man responsible for the song that opens and closes every single one of my videos, as well as two of my favorite albums of all time. It's the one and only Patrick Dennis. So what are your earliest memories of music in your life? That would be my mother. She was a uh, folk singer or aspiring folk singer <laughs> in the 60s. So my earliest music memory would be destroying her guitar when I was about four years old because I couldn't carry it. It was too big for me. How did that impact the music you grew up with? Music on my own was probably a result of complete rebellion. Growing up, my, my dad would force feed us things like Willie Nelson's gospel record, which in hindsight was brilliant. It was genius. I mean, Willie's one of the greatest phrasers, you know, as a... 11 year old you hate that stuff probably thinking about it sergeant pepper and the moody blues threshold of a dream was mm -hmm. one of the other ones those two records probably had more of a subliminal effect on the way that i s still like to make music in the way that the the Truckee brothers which i was in made music where we really loved because that's c kind of where me and me and hoffy met as well as is that sort of layering and meshing and harmonies and sounds and stacking and sort of messing with the, the construct of making, making a pop song. So what were the bands that you went after then when you were in this rebellion stage? What were the bands that really spoke to you? Oh, The Clash, The Pogues, Love The Who. Mm -hmm. all, all my friends were, were into electronic music and I was this closet U2 fan. It was the, when their first few records were out and, and that third record war was just this mm -hmm. big guitar record and nobody would admit to liking it, and I just wore that thing out. Did you get to see concerts at a young age, or was that something that oh, didn't yeah. happen until after? Yeah. first concert I saw was the Smiths, and that was, that was just fantastic. Seeing Johnny Marr and, and Morrissey flagellating himself with bouquets of roses people were giving him. You know, what more, what, what, what's not to like? So how did that lead you into making music, the creation process? I started playing drums. Some family members got together and got me a couple of pieces and then I started making money and mowing lawns and things and buying extra pieces. I was rooting around for somebody to play with and uh, all these people who claimed to be musicians wouldn't form a band. And I finally found some guys in high school and we formed a band and, and we were big fans of The Clash and The Who and so we just started making a lot of noise. But I found myself doing the Grant Hart thing, singing and playing drums. I got frustrated with not being able to physically move so I started playing a lot of guitar in that band. And so then how did that lead to kind of the projects you've been doing after the fact? One kind of followed the other. Not because of me, but because of the other guys in the band. I think I was in one of the best bar bands in America for a while. A band called the McEnany's in San Diego. and They went on to do things after I left. I just kind of fell from one thing to the other and then I got signed to a local label in San Diego, mm -hmm. uh, Cargo, and who were best known for a lot of punk stuff. They signed some of us guys who were really songwriters and who had a, a punk background but not in the same way. Punk isn't a sound, it's, it's a no, spirit, it's, it's a way it's, you it's, approach. It's yeah, punk's there. an attitude. I mean, punk rock, if you want to get down to it, punk rock and Joe Sherman and The Clash were basically Woody Guthrie mm -hmm. amplified. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's folk music. Yeah. I think in, any music at its best is, is folk music, it's of the people. Whatever form you're talking about, whether you're talking about punk rock or jazz or the genesis of rock and roll or mm -hmm. any of that stuff. And particularly punk with its, with its idealism and, and its attitudes and social environment it came from. That's folk music. So for you, as a musician, what it, what's your favorite part? I think it's from the uh, collaboration. I don't really get off on being myself playing by myself. It's the collaborating in the studio, whether it's with the musicians you're playing with or the producer you're working with, because I get off on it. I get off on what the drummer's doing, smiling at the drummer because I just heard them do something. I get off on what the, the bass player's doing or the, you know, whatever's happening. And then the collaboration with the audience. Uh, I s said to uh, Tim Kerr, from, uh, he's a Texas punk rocker, and I was talking to him about how I really loved the way he incited the audience to get involved. And uh, he corrected me and said, no, it's about inviting the audience to get involved. It's, it's not about being above anybody else. It's about, it's about it being a celebration, a party, whatever you want it to be, you know, whether it's Gogo -go Bordello going off and it's a giant party or it's inviting the audience to, literally to take over. Those are the moments that are the best for me as a member of the audience or in a band. So how have you seen things like that change, how the shifts in the world of music itself has changed? The business is different. People are still figuring it out. I'm still figuring it out. Everybody's still figuring it out. But I think it's just as exciting. I mean, I think, I think musically, there are all these kids out there that have a completely different perspective because they've had everything at their fingertips within seconds. Mm -hmm. Curtis Mayfield, Led Zeppelin, they want to go back to Nina Simone, you know, whatever they, whatever they want or some, or the latest thing, they can punch it up and have a listen and 
sample it right there. Whereas, you know, I used to have to go order the record. If they didn't have the record, I'd have to order it and be two weeks till I got it. Those kids are creating this hybrid music that I don't quite understand and is really exciting. Again, I mentioned Gogo Bordello. That is the spirit of rock and roll, and it doesn't sound like Memphis. And there are plenty of young bands that are, are doing things that are really interesting, and they're putting everything into it. The energy of, of a bunch of kids getting together to, to make music and it becoming something greater than them in the room, that's there all over the place. When it comes to live acts, because you've seen a lot of shows, is, are there one or two acts, that you know shows that you saw that just you'll never forget because they were that good? The Water Boys in 1986, tiny little club in San Diego, and it was it was before just before Carl Carl Wallinger left the band, mm -hmm. so it was that complete lineup. Opening and closing of all of my videos has your song "Right Hook of Love." Yeah, ah. that's, that's funny. Is there is there <laughs> is there a genesis behind that? Where where did that song emerge? I lived in Manchester in England for years, and two of my children were born there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my, growing up, a lot of my favorite bands came from there. Obviously, my first concert was the Smiths. Sure. It was a band called I Am Clute. I was probably listening to it a little too much of them. Uh, I, I, was in a, I was in a dark place, shall we say. It came from an absolute frustration and a, uh, probably an angry, mm -hmm. an angry place, but an angry exercising those, those demons. So currently, are you, with, with all of these half-finished songs that are frustrating you to no end. Are you recording them? Do you, you know, do you foresee another record at some point with any certain configuration? Are you working with a new configuration? I don't know whether it'll be a Wire Pony record or it'll be something else, but there's, there's, definitely, there's definitely music coming. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff demoed at this point. There are, a lot of, um, there are a lot of things that are recorded and I'm playing everything on it. And there's a couple of side things I'm writing, writing with a friend in Nashville. Uh, Anne McHugh and we're going to record with some producer friends of mine coming up and, and I've written a few songs with Cindy Wasserman from Dead Rock West as well and I don't, I don't know where the, where the songs are going to find life but they will find life. And where can people find out more about you and your current projects then? I guess you can just go to patrickdennis.com and that'll lead you to Wire Pony or Truckies or whatever. Whatever you're doing. You know, whatever's, whatever's going on. Cindy Wasserman from Dead Rock West. My little accident, you mock like Dylan, making the morning repent. But how much you pay to get out of this crazy, mad, beautiful, crazy, mad, beautiful. Crazy, mad, and beautiful Light up and set this fire My foreign teenage tram And you call my band You made one misstep You paid way too much to get out of this Crazy, mad, and beautiful Crazy, mad, and beautiful Crazy, mad, and beautiful Another day off There's one more ride off That you take and you go Cold enough to be alone When you have a world away You're giving up the right to say Is it 
taking its toll Heaven only knows You're my misdirection You're my better side Heaven only knows You're my disaffection You're my bitter Crazy, mad, beautiful Crazy, mad, beautiful Crazy, mad, beautiful Crazy, mad, but you're beautiful